Hello friends, my name is Host Eric, I'm host talking with famous people, and I thought I'd go over a few debate concepts today uh, using a simple sentence like this to explain how debate concepts occur everywhere around us all the time in life, and we utilize them all the time, but because we don't really understand exactly what they are, we may use them in a sloppy fashion, we can clean that up, and it'll be a very nice thing to do. Resolved, we should go to the Arboretum on Tuesday morning to take pictures for the upcoming wedding. This is the sort of thing that one might imagine somebody claiming we should go to the Arboretum on Tuesday morning to take pictures of the upcoming wedding. You can learn a lot about reasoning, thinking, analysis, parsing out of sentences and stuff from a simple claim like this. Note first that it's a normative claim. It says we should go. It tells us what we ought to do, not what we are doing. It's not descriptive. It doesn't predict. I suspect we will go. The Arboretum, it prescribes. It says what we ought to do. Now, as you, as with the doctor's thing, a prescription is for a problem of some sort. So the fact that you're making a normative claim implies that you need to, um, that there's a problem that's being, at, at least claim, there's a claim that a problem is being resolved by your proposed solution. Your solution is go to the Arboretum, for, take pictures of the upcoming wedding. The problem, naturally, is going to be you want to have pictures for the wedding. You don't have them yet. All right, so the details. This one says when and where. This is to the Arboretum. That's where. On Tuesday morning, that's when. Now, those ones, we're going to note like that. These details are things that you could dispute about the res the resolved the resolution under dispute. The resolution is the thing the person is saying we ought to do is the thing that you're then going to have to parse out to figure out whether he's right or not. It, I'm not saying you're going to argue about it. I'm saying we're going to figure out if that's a good idea or not by testing it in, in a neutral way, in a person neutral way. So Criteria. The criteria here is implied. The implied criteria is not shown anywhere in here, but it is that we, well, is this a good way to solve a need that we have that's uh, as yet unresolved? We haven't yet dealt with the wedding, the pre wedding pictures where we take those pictures where, by the lake and shit like that. Is this a good way to resolve that problem? I say this is a good way to resolve that problem. So the criterion then would be it resolves a problem and is preferable to alternatives, basically. Or does it resolve the problem in a way that is preferable to alternatives? Whoever best shows that either it does resolve the problem and is preferable to alternatives, or shows that it doesn't resolve the problem and or is not preferable to alternatives, should win the, the resolved point in question. So inherency refers to whether or not there actually is a problem. But hold on, I want to go on to this thing here before we go any further. The criteria is, I should put this here, it's sort of contained within the why to take pictures and the, um, the it just, that, that's it. That's, this whole thing is one idea. To take pictures for the upcoming wedding, that explains the why. All right, so inherency basically is a question of, well, do we have inherency means, is there actually a problem and will it solve itself? Well, yes, there's actually a problem. We need pictures. We need pictures for the wedding. And it is not going to solve itself. It's not like an instance where a child is growing and eventually they're, old, they're tall enough to ride the ride, these pictures won't take themselves if we wait long enough. So that's important to note for inherency. Solvency. Will this thing, this prescribed action, solve the problem? The problem is, again, we need pictures. So the answer is yes, 100%. We can talk about uh, the probability of this impact being 100%. We can talk about the magnitude of it being, it's binary, so it's complete. 
And we can talk about the significance of it being, well, that's going to be a matter for is this significant in the bigger picture or not. Significance regarding the resolution is absolute. All right, harms. What are the harms in the status quo of not having any pictures? Well, the harms in the status quo of not having any pictures are probably your woman and or her friends or relatives or whatever will be very upset at you, yada, 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 yada. We can imagine what the harms are um, that make this justifiable to solve. Okay, significance. Are those, they, okay, those harms exist, but are they significant enough? Should, will she be really mad or just a little bit like, okay, whatever. Well, that's why we have to address significance. And then lastly, topicality. If you're making an argument about, if, if this is being presented as, Tommy, we have a serious problem we need to deal with. We don't have a floral arrangement for the upcoming wedding. And you say, oh, well, we should go to the Arboretum on Tuesday morning and take pictures for the upcoming wedding. That doesn't address the topic that is at hand. It doesn't solve the flower problem. It shouldn't be addressed until the flower problem is done being addressed. And so that would be a topicality issue. These are good ways to understand how it is that um, debate occurs in our everyday life. So if, in fact, you wanted to challenge this, if, if, if you suggested this to the, to the woman and she was like, no, I don't. I don't like the, I just don't like that kind of a backdrop. I want something more urban, more city, maybe a little bit of, more rustic, one of the two, I'm not sure. What is she doing? She's challenging one of the details specifically. She's saying, she's challenging on a contention level whether this is a good idea in and of itself. She's saying um, that the Arboretum is a bad place to go. We, I agree with you that we should go somewhere and take pictures. I'm not objecting to Tuesday morning, but we don't, we shouldn't go to the Arboretum. Or alternately, where? That's like rebutting a contention level argument, saying, uh, I like, I'm debating out the nitty gritty of your plan. The why part, to take pictures of the upcoming wedding, you could say in response to it, well, look, I do want to go to the Arboretum on Tuesday morning, but not to take pictures for the upcoming wedding. I'd like to go there instead to take pictures for my nature project that I'm working on and I'm taking pictures of plants and shit like that. Okay, so in that case, you, we'd negate the resolution because even though we're going to go to the Arboretum on Tuesday morning, it's not for the reason prescribed. And we won't do the action prescribed. We won't do the action of taking pictures for the wedding. We'll do the act, some other action, so therefore we negate the resolution. If I were to attack it on inherency, I'd say, Honey, remember we took those last Wednesday. Okay? Or... Honey, remember, we've got scheduled that afternoon to do it in front of the library. We already hired the, the photographer. We can't change that now. You know, that would be, the problem's going to solve itself if we don't do anything, so stop producing solutions to problems that are already solved. Regarding solvency, if it didn't solve the problem, it would be something like, we should go to the Arboretum on Tuesday morning and take pictures of the upcoming wedding. and country wedding and we got the nature half uh, at the nature park my check Mic check. All right, so the point being that, oh, right, we were on inherency. Oh, solvency, I'm sorry, we were on solvency. So for solvency, if, if she goes, no, John, this is a town and country wedding, okay? We already got the nature pictures, remember? At, up at Big Bear, we took those nature pictures, meaning at the urban half of things. Going to the Arboretum won't do any good. Then that's a solvency issue. Your prob your plan is fine, but it won't actually solve the problem we actually have. Or, no, John, did you forget? There's that uh, electromagnetic field that causes all cameras to malfunction within the arboretum. That'll be another solvency problem. I like the idea, but we can't actually take pictures in there. Goodbye, Elsie. <laughs> um, and that's my lowdown on understanding debate stuff. 
like that as actual world phenomena that do occur. This is descriptive. It's discovered truths here. Debate, debate, so-called debate rules. People like to say to me things about like, oh well, you it's because you know all the formal debate rules, and I, and I know it's not formal debate rules. It's descriptive of what people are doing and relying upon without understanding what they're doing and relying upon. Just like sheet music is not is not prescriptive. It's descriptive. It, the problem then occurs when somebody says, yeah, well, I interpret that sheet music to mean different notes than it says. And you go, well, you can interpret it to mean different notes than it says, but you're still playing the wrong song. That's not the song that, that that's not what that says, you know. Um, and you can argue as much as you want in favor of the value of learning to play by ear there's no disputing that people can be excellent musicians having learned to play by ear. It's true for argumentation as well. Look at Taylor. He's excellent at doing it. Even though he learned to play by ear, he doesn't make those kind of mistakes. He's just as precise as I am in all of his reasoning. He knows when and where to, to back away from shit and when and where to stick to shit, you know? So you don't have to learn by sheet music, but it doesn't change the fact that if you are doing it and you're playing badly by ear, and I've given you the sheet music and you claim then that your interpretation of the sheet music is just as good as the actual thing the sheet music says, then at that point you go, no. Yeah. Anyway, was that the end of this video? Yeah, that's the end of this video. And I'd like to remind you not to forget to eat plenty of cheese. Plus, I love you.